Episode 4 begins with Akira relaxing on the rooftop of a building, playing a PS4 game. Meanwhile, Kenichiro is cooking lunch and asks Akira to clean the table since the food is ready. Akira happily enjoys the delicious meal prepared by Kenichiro. It's understandable that Akira feels envious of Kenichiro's versatility and reliability in any situation, which has earned him fame on campus. However, Kenichiro is aware that Akira's innocence makes it challenging for him to find a girlfriend. Annoyed by this fact, Akira promises to get a girlfriend soon, forgetting about the zombie outbreak that has already spread worldwide. Nevertheless, he insists on proving himself to Kenichiro by finding a girlfriend. Kenichiro, glancing down from the building, can only cheer Akira on, which only makes Akira even more upset. Kenichiro becomes curious upon seeing Akira's list of 100 activities to do before becoming a zombie, where he writes about wanting to date a flight attendant, which seems highly improbable to Kenichiro. Akira remains composed despite Kenichiro's teasing, as he is determined not to limit his desires after leaving his previous job. Working in a dark company encouraged Akira to seek freedom. With only 99 items on his list, Kenichiro adds number 34, to become a comedian. Akira realizes that Kenichiro intends to experience it himself and tries to dissuade him. However, Kenichiro wants Akira to feel the same way, so he doesn't remove it, believing that whatever Akira has already written will also become something he desires. Kenichiro feels indebted to Akira for saving him, thinking that if it weren't for him, Kenichiro might have turned into a zombie permanently. Akira then invites Kenichiro to go to Ikabukuro District, the largest electronics center in Japan, to buy a big TV, which Akira desires. On their way to Ikabukuro, Kenichiro, riding pillion on Akira's motorcycle, looks up information on how to become a comedian. He discovers options such as attending a special school, joining an agency, or becoming an apprentice to an established comedian. Akira, aware of Kenichiro's tendency to use nudity in his humor, directly points it out. Kenichiro's reaction is less than ideal, and Akira wonders why he wants to become a comedian. Kenichiro's dream of becoming a comedian stems from his love for watching comedy shows on TV, which he feels is a calling. Akira contemplates how he never thought about such aspirations when he was a child and how working at the dark company might have been his ambition. As Akira daydreams, he is brought back to reality by Kenichiro's shout. They notice a fuel truck heading towards them with its driver turned into a zombie. The truck poses a threat, and Akira searches for a way to avoid the massive explosion that will occur if it crashes. He spots an underground subway station entrance and speeds towards it, risking a head-on collision. However, Akira manages to use the open door of a parked car as a ramp to escape as the fuel truck collides with a fire truck. The impact triggers a massive explosion that blocks the path to the subway station with debris. Undeterred, Akira accelerates and enters the subway tunnel. As they discuss their close call, Kenichiro suddenly screams, alerting them to a group of zombies approaching. Akira accidentally causes Kenichiro to be thrown from the motorcycle due to sudden braking. Seeing an opportunity, Akira calls him to take shelter in a nearby underground supermarket, hoping to find other survivors who might already be there. After successfully entering the supermarket area, Akira and Kenichiro tightly close the iron grills from inside and sever the zombie's hand. Curious about the situation inside, a spotlight suddenly shines on them. Upon realizing they are not zombies, the women inside feel somewhat relieved, knowing they have help in fighting the undead. These women are terrified by the zombie outbreak, and there is an elderly man who has been mentally affected by the epidemic. They seek alcoholic beverages to divert their attention from the zombies. Akira and Kenichiro, aware that food and drinks have been prepared, feel like they are on a blind date, a common occurrence in Japan. The three women have just arrived in Japan after finishing their work in Los Angeles. Kenichiro introduces himself and Akira as college friends and tries to find out if they work in the same company, with the women confirming that they are seniors and juniors at a company. Reika admits to this and confirms that they are flight attendants, fulfilling Akira's earlier intuition. Maki and Yukari, still frightened by the zombie's body movements in front of them, make the atmosphere tense again. Akira tries to figure out how to entertain the women and alleviate their fear. Attempting to approach Yukari, he ends up looking foolish compared to Kenichiro, who effortlessly charms Maki. Akira then attempts to drink tequila through his nose, and Kenichiro uses his nude jokes to entertain the women. Meanwhile, Akira, who is in the bathroom, hits the jackpot after chugging a whole bottle of tequila through his nose. Kenichiro, being flirted with by the intoxicated Maki, looks for a bed to fulfill their desires. Yukari, worried about Akira, goes to find him and eventually does. 
when the conversation momentarily stops, Yukari reveals that she already has a boyfriend but has lost contact with him. Akira, feeling resigned upon hearing this, is grateful to have given her a brief glimmer of hope, even though it vanished instantly. As Kenny Churo and Maki continue searching for Reika, they discover that she has already been infected by a zombie, likely due to the elderly man who was bitten first. Reika attacks them while they are still drunk, and Kenichiro manages to avoid her onslaught. Unfortunately, Maki is immediately pounced upon and killed by Reika. Now, Reika sets her sights on Kenichiro, leaving him terrified. Kenichiro, seeing the suitcase, grabs it and immediately strikes Reika when she attacks. Feeling guilty for killing her, but knowing she's already a zombie, it's not much of an issue. However, he becomes suspicious when the elderly man suddenly disappears. Meanwhile, Akira and Yukari are engaged in a conversation on the stairs. Akira shares his frustrations about working in the dark company, and Yukari empathizes, feeling the same way about her job as a flight attendant in order to protect the lives of passengers. She recalls a middle-aged passenger who berated her due to a flight delay, saying they were merely flight attendants in the sky. Akira feels sorry for Yukari, given the disrespectful treatment she had to endure. Yukari admits to losing her enthusiasm for work after that incident and realizes that she originally liked the job because it was enjoyable for her. Akira then shares his tragic story of joining the dark company, hoping to build a good network, meet important people, and maybe even find a girlfriend as an office worker. However, all those hopes vanished on his first day at the company. For three years, he struggled to find freedom in a world ravaged by the zombie outbreak, he tells Yukari that her job is much more enjoyable because she chose to become a flight attendant from the start, unlike him. While Yukari is explaining something, the elderly man who had disappeared attacks her from behind and infects her with a zombie bite. Akira, unable to do much, becomes enraged and beats the old man zombie until he falls beneath the stairs. Yukari embraces Akira, feeling devastated that she will no longer have female friends to confide in since she's infected. Akira is also upset because he didn't luck into a job he could handle mentally, but since it was his choice from the start, he has to endure and enjoy it despite the difficulties. As Yukari tries to push Akira to escape, she realizes that he's an enjoyable conversationalist, and she feels a strange sense of enjoyment during this impromptu blind date in the midst of the zombie outbreak. She thanks Akira for listening to her confessions and becomes aware of her feelings for him. However, she is attacked again by the elderly zombie, and Akira hurriedly runs away, leaving Yukari to her inevitable death. Akira, crying as he runs towards the ground floor, accidentally comes across Kenichiro, who has brought the large TV he desired. This sight makes Akira burst into laughter due to Kenichiro's fulfilled wish, and they quickly return to the base camp. Kenichiro, preparing dinner, is traumatized by the flight attendants turning into zombies, and Akira doesn't respond to him at all, solely focused on playing games and reminiscing about his childhood dreams. What were Akira's childhood aspirations? Will there be a journey back to his hometown?